Hello. Hello, everybody. Good to see you. I smell that wonderful stuff on your stove, Mrs. Schwartz. Well, anyway, today we have a man, a, a very fine young man, who's running for city council, District 6, my district, Gail Brewer's district, and he has a fabulous background. And I remember his wonderful father, Victor Gottbaum, whenever there was a union issue, the first name that came up was Victor Gottbaum. And I remember Betsy Gottbaum, who was a wonderful uh, public advocate and a wonderful director of the museum of the city of New York or New York Historical Society. And she did so many fabulous things besides bringing in a very good cafeteria. Well, Noah Gottbaum, the first thing I want to ask you is, will you share your fabulous background with us? <laughs> Josh. Well, thank you very much for having me. It's, uh, it's great to be here. The Josh Walensky Show, so thank you. Um, I am really fortunate, Josh, to have uh, grown up in a very progressive background, as you, as you know, um, and also in a family that really uh, cherished uh, social, social welfare and social action. Um, I grew up in New York. I grew up in the anti-war movement, uh, always involved in politics, involved in uh, organizing efforts, uh, the anti-war movement. Uh, the first uh, campaign I remember was, uh, well, I got out for Gene McCarthy back <laughs> in 68 um, and got involved throughout. I uh, was in Washington as a, as a young kid in the anti-war uh, and progressive politics, um, always involved. And luckily to be see at the negotiating table when, when my father was there uh, negotiating, but also uh, working and building uh, a, a phenomenal union in District Council 37. Um, my mother was a social worker and a teacher, and that was always instilled that uh, first and foremost, we're looking out for others. Both of my parents grew up on welfare. Uh, both of them were educated in the New York City public schools. Mm -hmm. So uh, really instilled uh, in me at a, at a young age. I went off to college. Um, and while I was there, I, this was 1980, and felt that uh, the Democratic Party under Jimmy Carter had drifted too far to the right. Mm -hmm. And I went out and worked uh, for Teddy Kennedy. And even though we lost, uh, that campaign uh, really to instill a liberal tradition, very important to me. Came back to New York, uh, did some work in economic development here, helping to rebuild the city in the 80s. But my focus, that was my day job, my focus was uh, really looking at the city, which was very much during the Reagan era, haves and have-nots, with my friends and saying, wait a minute, there's something wrong here. We need to be involved. You remember this was the time of the squeegee men, this was the time of the homeless hotels, uh, and really huge separation of wealth uh, and poverty here in the city, and I wanted to do something about it. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I pulled some friends together in a living, my living room, and we looked and said, what can we do here? And uh, there was really very little way to get involved. And so uh, then in that room was New York Cares, which is now the largest volunteer organization in the country, the largest huge social service agency now, was born through a bunch of friends. Uh, it has grown over the last 27 years, I'm proud to say, serving half a million New Yorkers, seniors, homeless, students, children, uh, in innovative ways, and I'm very proud to have not only conceived of and co-founded New York Cares, but to have stayed involved all, all, because it really has played a great role, I think, in making New York a stronger community. Uh, I then spent uh, time in the old country, in Eastern Europe and in Russia, uh, where I was working on some of the economic transitions there. Uh, my family comes from Russia, from Ukraine, and uh, it was very exciting to be involved uh, in some of that trans transition, but I was always drawn back to New York. And uh, I came back and I worked in the environmental field. This was 10 years ago. I uh, helped, I ran, I was the CEO of one of the largest recycling companies in New York City. 
um, mm. got very involved in the recycling industry, uh, not only because it was important for the environment, but also economically, it was a much better choice. And we're seeing that now, but back then it wasn't so apparent. Uh, I then I got involved, my kids are in public schools. I uh, was an only, only parent. Uh, my kids started in public schools. And uh, I noticed very quickly that uh, our, what was going on under Bloomberg and Joel Klein uh, was problematic, in my view. That we were not investing in our public schools, that we had set up a, a competitive and a business model. Uh, and again, as is, was always my lesson in, my, in life, if you see something that you feel is wrong, you have to step up. You have to change it. You can't waffle or equivocate. And so I was elected to the local, local uh, uh, PS87 school leadership team. Then I was elected to the school board, and I was elected president of the school board, which encompassed the Upper West Side and West and Central Harlem. And there uh, I've been involved over the last five years now uh, in really some, I call Diane Ravitch talked about the great school wars. These have been school wars uh, really to try to preserve public education because I believe uh, Mayor Bloomberg has undermined our public schools significantly. Um, and so I'm very, very involved in trying to get parents more involved in public education and stopping a competitive system, uh, a business model, uh, which is what we've had, I believe. Um, where we have our schools and our kids competing against each other. That, that, that doesn't work. We've gone in the wrong direction. And today, the tests were announced, mm -hmm. more tests, and mm -hmm. uh, it was announced that li literally, you know, three out of four kids in New York City uh, are not proficient in mm -hmm. English. It's crazy. In any event, I got very involved in education, um, fighting with parents for, uh, to lead the charge against overcrowding, to lead the charge against this testing madness, to stop charter co-locations, charter schools in our public schools, which I think, again, set up a competitive model, which is not what our kids need. We need a collaboration. Uh, been very involved. We have PCBs in, in our schools throughout the district and uh, worked very strongly to force the city to recognize that and to remediate it, not in 10 years, but in two years. Um, and overall, to get educators to support our teachers, uh, and to get back to public education rather than private competitive education. Um, and that has led me now to, uh, to run for city council uh, because I believe the city council can be a much, much stronger place. It needs to be a counterbalance to the mayor. And uh, I look at the city now, um, and it has become uh, a place, to some extent, much more of haves and have-nots. And you look on the Upper West Side, uh, development has uh, really gotten out of control. Yes. Um, and we have so many of our neighbors who are on fixed income, our seniors, uh, people who are really holding, just holding on. And we have to have a government. <laughs> we have to have a council that is going to address that and really redress the balance because I believe uh, the haves have really dominated and the vast majority of our New Yorkers, middle class, working people, seniors, uh, ha have really been pushed out of the process and that's yes. wrong. That's right. Uh, I'm very concerned with housing too and it's just unconscionable that you can't file an application anymore for public housing. They're not accepting applications. It's also terrible that they're selling uh, public housing land, something that LaGuardia started in 1934. Uh, it's also uh, unconscionable that Section 11 is gone which is very much like Michelama, mm -hmm. that Michelama is gone, yep. that rent control is only for those who are in it, that the new people can't, and even rent stabilization and the rent <coughs> stabilization board, the latest increases are totally unacceptable. How do those things happen, Noah? Well, I think, I think Josh, uh, the power and influence of money has dominated. It, 
you, you look at if you look starting in the eighties, but really moving in and under, under Bloomberg, yeah. uh, it has gotten totally uh, unbalanced, totally out of control, yeah. and so uh, we have a situation where those who have <laughs> yeah. um, are are lauded, and it's almost an afterthought that we invest in our social services, that we invest in our public uh, our public institutions. So as you say, public housing has been completely undermined, undercut. And, and to be fair to Ann Cunningham, let's also remember SRO housing, single room occupancy housing, right. very, very important. Well, and again, it's being, uh, if you notice right now on the Upper West Side, one of the issues is <laughs> Bloomberg uh, has basically gone to war to some extent on mm -hmm. our poor and working people, trying to cut wages, trying to cut benefits. Uh, really putting incentives and investing not in uh, our public institutions, not in our schools, not in our public housing, not in our social services, but rather in uh, corporate, a lot of it's corporate giveaways. And so Goldman Sachs doesn't need <laughs> those benefits. We have to be in, uh, investing locally. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at what's happened with the homeless situation, we have not been investing in public housing. In fact, we've been destroying public housing. We need, as a, as a council, to address that issue, to focus on it. We need to redress the balance. We have to go up to Albany and change the Erstat law, the Rent Stable Rent Guidelines Board. That's got to be uh, serving all, all the city, not just the development community. That's just wrong. And if you look again on the Upper West Side, uh, the city has, without any consultation, put in homeless shelters, which are actually ending up pushing out permanent housing, mm -hmm. people who are poor uh, SROs, mm -hmm. and paying slumlords mm -hmm. three, three and four and five times, $4,000 a month the city is paying for this homeless shelter on 95th Street. And what it's doing is it's pushing people into homelessness. It's crazy. Uh, you look at our, our public school system, PS 199, PS 191, on the west side, the mayor, without any consultation, once again, says uh, we're going to sell these plots. We're going to demolish these schools because we need to build more luxury high rises. The theory is, OK, we're going to use uh, public property, public land, um, sell it off, and fund with private money uh, what should be invested in publicly. And it's just wrong. It's not been for our benefits. I, really I led the charge. Uh, against the demolition of these schools and the building of a yet another luxury high-rise uh, at, at 199, at 191. The people of Lincoln Towers, they're against that, Josh. The people of Amsterdam Houses, against that. Yes. And yet, uh, we've had this all-powerful mayor and no check or not enough checks in the city council. Absolutely. It's one thing I want to work on. I want to ask you three points because one of your specialties has been education. I want to ask you, what are you going to do about standardized tests, which do two things. They keep out the minorities, they, and they really stress out the students for unnecessary uh, reasons, and they kill critical thinking, which also is an important thing. And also, what are you going to how are you going to change this direction of chartered schools? Now, chartered schools are fine for people who have lots of money, but we have a public education system in this city, city that has to be strengthened and reinforced. And then, what are your feelings about getting the kids in this city to reclaim childhood? I love to see these, I love seeing these scooters on the streets of New York now because the children are getting away from the boob tube <laughs> in respect to Manhattan neighborhood network and starting to be children again. So what are your thoughts on well, that? Well, let's talk about education because uh, yeah. that, is, that is an issue that is near and dear to my heart, but yeah. to the city. Uh, one out of every three dollars in the New York City budget goes into uh, our K through 12 education, 24 billion dollars. 
we are not spending, we are not spending it wisely, we are not investing wisely. Uh, part of the issue is that our schools have been led on the federal level, on the state level, and on the city by business people. Uh, I have been in business, but education is not a business. Education needs to be looked at much more broadly. It is a public right. It is, our, it is literally uh, our gold standard. It is uh, not only job training, it is the ladder up for opportunity for my grandparents, my parents. Um, it is the way to economic prosperity and it makes a solid base. But we have, even though we've spent more under Bloomberg, we have set up, he has set up a system of competition a business model where you have winners and losers. And instead of investing in things that work, which educators understand, instead of bringing in parents, instead of supporting our teachers and bringing our community into our schools, they have set up a system where they know better what's best for our kids. They are focusing on the testing, which crowds out the arts. It crowds out the social sciences. It crowds out music. That's what brings our kids in, into the schools. That's what makes a great school. Uh, folk, our class sizes have ballooned. We have cut services to special needs kids. We have undermined our remediation programs. That's the wrong way to go. And investing in testing? That's not education. That's a model that the business community would never accept for their own children in private schools, would never have it. Mm -hmm. And yet, that is what's being forced on us. We need to change the model. We need to change the game. And that's one of the things I hope to do in the city council. I can walk in as a parent of three, one of whom has special needs, public school parent. And again, I'm the only one in this council race whose kids go to public schools because I have a passion for it and I believe in public education. But we as a city and as elected officials and as a community have to invest in it. It's much easier to close a school than it is to fix a school. But ultimately, if we don't invest and in work to fix our schools, invest in early childhood education, invest in wraparound services, invest in different types of education, career and tec technical education, and broad curriculum, and supporting our teachers, not vilifying them. If we don't do that, we end up spending two, three, four times more on public safety, on prisons, on health care, uh, on social services, because ultimately we're building just an underclass when we have, as we've seen today, after 12 years of Bloomberg, twice the investment, we've doubled our budget, and we still have, according to the old test, forget the new test, but under the old s s standard, four out of five students in New York City are not ready for college. They're not ready. They are not prepared. And so what happens? CUNY has to remediate, 80%. 80, 80 so essentially, our system isn't doing its job. Uh, and so this Bloomberg miracle really needs to be turned around. We need to change the game. And I hope, uh, apart from the fact that parents have been thrown out. I mean, it's, it is a, as a parent, my, my daughter's got to go into high school next year. It's a maze. Our middle school process, it's terrible. We have overcrowding. In so many places, special needs, we're undercutting. And so uh, to have, A, we need educators leading our school system. We need to be supporting our teachers. We need parents involved at all levels. And we really need to take back our public education system and invest in it, take it away from a business model, and put it into a model where social services are really supported. And I'm hoping that I can go right into the Education Committee of the Council. Wonderful. Noah, in respect to your great father, Victor Gottbaum, I want to ask the next question. Professor Richard Wolf, economist of the New School and graduate of Princeton University, Stafford, said, that less than 
of our population are now members of labor unions. What is your feeling about this disastrous uh, situation? Well, Josh, I mean, I think one of the biggest issues we have in the city today is this enormous wealth stratification. We're losing our middle class. We have those who are doing very, very well, and then we have those who, the middle class has really gotten on edge because, because of housing, because of affordability, because of health care. And then we have the poor. But the middle class has been pushed out mm -hmm. in so many ways and are really on the cliff. Why is that? It's because in lo to some extent, there has been a, 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 an all-out war on unions and also on working people. So that it's, it's seen as an outrage that someone who works as a teacher or works uh, in the city parks department or works with our schools or our health care should have a pension plan that allows them a dignified retirement. It's seen as uh, awful or that they should have a, a decent wage so that they can uh, support their families rather than having to go out and get numerous jobs. Now what that is a large to large extent uh, been an attack on unions and working people. And unions have been, were key to s solidifying the middle class. And not just in terms of pro providing jobs, but also uh, my father's union, for example, they had, they had great health systems built right in. They had, they had housing plans. They had wonderful GED programs. And they had their own university uh, providing support for their members, but really solidifying the middle class. Bloomberg has been uh, really on attack on that, and the unions um, have really been on their back back heels. But the unions were so critical and have been so critical, import, critically important, for ensuring and standing up for the middle class and working people, and uh, they have been vilified. And that is, to me, that's wrong. But it's not just wrong for, for that population, it's wrong for our city. We need, we need strong, decent wages. We need strong pensions. We need a living wage. We need uh, a good, strong minimum wage. And uh, the unions have led the way, but we really need, they need to get support. Yeah, Bloomberg wouldn't walk into Columbia Presbyterian and say to Dr. Spencer Emery, you did this hernia operation wrong on this pati patient, but he goes into the schools and he tells teachers what to do and how to do it. I mean, isn't there a way of putting an end <coughs> to this insanity? W worse than that, Josh. What, what, what the mayor has done, what this education reform movement has done, and it's not just the education reform movement, it is really a business-led model, and remember, uh, this is a, a lot of the, uh, a lot of this community led this economy into the gutter, the wreck, and we invested so hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars to bring that back. But now they're they're opining and taking over all all sides, and uh, instead of being accountable, okay, Bloomberg saying, you know what, the schools are, are my responsibility. I really have to. Uh, look at it and say, what, what can we do better? There's only accountability for the little guy. There's only accountability for the teachers. They're the only ones who are getting value. Have you seen the mayor get a, a letter grade? Have you seen any evaluation of how the mayor's done in terms of combating mm -hmm. poverty? Uh, working class, how our seniors are doing rel relative? Mm -hmm. Have we seen in terms of the housing? No, all we've seen is an attack and an undermining of our public institutions. Look at what's going on at NYCHA. They want to, they want to sell that off. Oh, yeah. And it is a total lack of accountability and a lack of responsibility. But our city council, our elected officials, have to stand up. They cannot be rubber stamps. They cannot be captives of money or of a party or of elected officials who are doing the same thing over and over again. We have to change that. Um, but it really takes independent leadership. It takes strength. Uh, and the council really needs to regain that. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, it's really 
it's really very, very disconcerting what's happening. He pretends to be a champion <coughs> of small business, but there is no small business. This very moment when we speak, speak, Big Nick, who's been open for 51 years, has had to close, and so on. Not to mention Morris <coughs> Brothers and a few other yep. businesses. And there is no small business. The small business are the peddlers that are on the street. That's the small business. Well, and part of it is that we are incentivizing the demise of not only our working class, but our small businesses. Uh, I, I was in yesterday in one of the, one of the famous institutions of, of uh, the Upper West Side, which I will not name right now uh, because I don't want to get the owner in trouble. But uh, basically he said, I am attacked daily by these health inspectors who basically are looking at me as a revenue generation. Mm -hmm. And they're making my business so difficult. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are incentivizing through different tax credits, developments which are creating uh, an, an environment of large banks, uh, large banks and uh, Dwayne Reed's while the small businesses and the people who built the West Side, who built our community, who make our community what it is, are being pushed out. And that, uh, that has got, got to change. And uh, one of the ways it, 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 it will change is if uh, our elected officials, again, I'll go back to it, we're gonna have a new mayor, but we also have to have a new city council, a city council that is a counterweight, that and from a budgetary perspective, isn't just holding on, but is, is leading the way. Noah Gottbaum, I want to thank you. And you know something? You've got my vote. <laughs> You've got my vote as a senior citizen and a, a person as you, you know, you, you can tell by my questions that I really care about the West Side and people and the future of our children and our tenants and so on. You have my vote. Well, and this has been the Josh Walensky Show, but no, you have the last word. Keep on talking. What message or contact information do you want to give us? Oh, you're very kind. Well, that, that's very kind of you, Josh. Uh, we're running an independent campaign. We have 34 days left. I'm not part of the club. I'm not part of the clubhouse. Uh, I'm running a, a, a community-based. And so, gotbound2013.com. Come to our website. Uh, help join the campaign. And on September 10th, I hope I, hope I will get support uh, of this community. I've got very good response. Um, but it is ultimately very much democratic, which is great. I want everyone out there not only to vote, but vote for yourselves. And how do you do that? You vote by being an activist. I don't care how you're an activist. Come down here and do your show, or be active in your church, synagogue, or temple, or even, we still, we still need even people in Alcoholics Anonymous, in the Boy Scouts, but whatever you do, and that, you, that makes a difference is significant. Right, now. That's it. I mean, New York Cares was started on that. Our com West Side is a great com caring community. That's why I love being there. Uh, but we have to maintain that. And the schools need a lot of volunteers. The too. schools need volunteers, but the schools also need support of, of the entire community. Our seniors. Yeah. Uh, so we're, we, that's what one of the great things about the West Side. That's what's made the West Side great. That's our progressive mm -hmm. tradition of taking care of each other. And uh, that's what we have to continue, and we have to change the game up in uh, City Hall. Yeah, you, you have my vote, really, because you are really, you really are balanced, as my friend Pamela De Timmons said, who's a spiritual lover and a lover of the Native American people. You are balanced, and the bottom line is you're even spiritual in many ways. Well, Josh, it's a, real, a pleasure yeah. and an honor. And to hear that from you is a mainstay of our Upper West Side. Thank you very, very much. And I, it's an honor to be here. You're Thank welcome. You. And I hope you're on welcome. September 10th I get the, uh, the vote to represent yeah. the entire I community. I give my regards to your 91-year-old uh, father and your teenage mother. My teenage <laughs> uh, Betsy. Betsy <laughs>